Savage Life family, is this the opportunity of a lifetime? All stock earnings for Tesla is right around the corner and it is looking quite juicy right now for Tesla. So currently it is up 6% today, that's $13 to $220. People who are playing some call option plays on Tesla are printing some money currently. But as you can see, since August, Tesla has been at $288, and this was roughly right after the stock split that we have seen. Splitting it four ways equally, where you had one Tesla share at $800, dropping it to four Tesla shares at $200 price points. Well, ever since then, a month has passed and Tesla jumped up to $330 highs before ultimately decreasing now to these $220 lows, burning a hole in a lot of people's pockets. But that's not necessarily Tesla's fault. That is the economy's fault, which is pretty much at the midst of a collapse with inflation through the roof, interest rates rising, and people selling out of the stock market in order to have cash on hand for rainy days to come. But if you pay close attention, if you are a long-term investor, you want to be investing in the balance sheet of the company and what is the balance sheet looking like for Tesla. Well, as you can see, cash short-term investments has been on the rise. So cash on hands has been on the rise and total current assets have been on the rise for Tesla in the past two years alone. We have seen an increase from $24 billion in terms of assets to $31 billion. That only goes to show you that the cash flow is increasing for Tesla, which is beneficial for investors because the company is making more money every single quarter. But with this increase in cash flow and assets, we have to also pay attention to the liabilities. And what is the liabilities currently for Tesla? It seems they have been keeping it under control quarter by quarter. The past three quarters, liabilities have only increased 100 to $300 million, whereas their assets, on the other hand, is increasing billions of dollars every single quarter. And that offset is just going to increase the potential and the future outcome of where Tesla could head. Now, we also have jobs. Now, the economy has came out with the CPI data report saying that unemployment is on the rise as jobless claims are increasing. But on the other hand, when you have a company like Tesla who is going against this claim and actually hiring people, that's beneficial as an investor as well. So it says here that Chief Elon Musk warned colleagues in early June he had a super bad feeling about the economy and said the electric car maker needed to cut jobs, but then he later tweeted that the total headcount would increase over the next 12 months. So job listings on Tesla's website showed a steep drop in June and then July. But Tesla this week has listed over 6,900 jobs on its career website, almost a 50% surge since mid to June. So what has happened since mid to June till now? Why have they been incredibly bearish during those months, but now they are bullish? Does that mean this is a turnaround of the economy? Well, seeing as the earnings are around the corner, that's just hinting that the earnings are going to be better than expected. Why is that? Because of the continual increase in cash flow and the continual control over the liabilities of the company. Now, you have to play this as you are an owner of the company rather than an investor. If you are an owner of a company and you start hiring more people, that means that you are making more money and there's expectations of continually growing your company. You're not gonna hire more people if you are expecting to see a decline in profit. With that being said, the job hiring there was a hint at what could come for Tesla. Now we know if we see some pros in Tesla's earning, we are going to be seeing a jump in price, which is why we are seeing incredibly bullish activity today with Tesla being up 6% at 220 dollars now a lot of the investors in tesla like to say when is the company going to buy back now a stock buyback is one of the major ways a company can use its cash including investing in its operations paying off debt and buying another company and paying out money as dividend to an investor we all know if there is less shares uh, floating around that is going to increase the value of your current shares because it's going to make it much harder for individuals to buy into the company as there's less shares in the float but 
when a company is buying back shares, you don't want the company to be using its money to buying back shares. You want the company to use its money to continue to expand, to continue creating gigafactories, to continue expanding its charging infrastructure in the terms of Tesla, which is why I don't really see a pro of a stock buyback unless you are planning on selling Tesla stock soon and you want to make that quick flip. But I don't see that happening. If you guys do, be sure to drop it down below in the comment sections as well as explaining exactly why you see a stock buyback in the near future. So we've seen the pros and what is to expect it in the near upcoming future, but we have to see the cons in currently investing in Tesla stocks. Well, of course, Tesla cannot meet earning expectations, which could plummet the price of Tesla underneath those near those $200 price point ranges, which will be extremely negative. Not to mention the long-term investing into Tesla. Now, typically, if you are risk adverse and don't want to expose much of your portfolio in a risky situation, you would want to wait till after earnings to either buy into the company or sell prior to earnings if you are scared of what's to happen. But the risk of investing into Tesla is currently the energy grid that's going on in California. Now, if you ask me, California, it's its own country because they are completely off the rails currently of what is going on with the fires, with the earthquakes, with the politicians. But this article absolutely drove me crazy here saying that California asked electric vehicle owners to limit charging. Now, this is because their energy grid has been causing blackouts because the massive usage of energy in California that they cannot sustain. Well, you have to question yourself, is this going to happen across the entire US uh, or across overseas where their energy grid is not going to sustain electric vehicle charging? Now, that's definitely a con you have to think about, but it is one that's on the further extreme of the spectrum where you have to realize the population of California is just too much for it to actually sustain. Another con you have to look at is the increasing expense of battery production. Now, this has been combated by expanding production across seas. So it's saving money there, but this is one of the biggest holes in Tesla's pockets that we do have to look out for. And this is a question that needs to be answered by the company of how they are going to combat this. Now, there are some questions being asked here by investors. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at it as earnings are coming closer. One of these questions here that caught my eye is we keep hearing the dire energy crisis in Germany this winter. What are Tesla's plans to combat power cuts? And will there be any delay to ramp up in production from Giga Berlin because of this? Now, this goes hand in hand with the energy grid situation that we are seeing in California. Is this going to continue happening in other countries? Is this going to continue happening in other states? And how will that affect Tesla's earnings. We also have how is the production plan going for the cyber truck? They have been building this truck for countless of years now. They're showing for the cyber truck was an absolute fail where he explained how the glass is so bulletproof, but he was able to throw a baseball bat right through the entire glass. And if it can't sustain a hit by a baseball, then how can it sustain a hit by an actual bullet? Now, I have a different perspective as a lot of these people questioning because they may be stock investors but not own an actual Tesla themselves. So as a Tesla vehicle owner myself and as a Tesla investor, the question I'd like to know is how are they going to go about increasing the charging time speeds? Because to fully charge my vehicle on superchargers takes around 40 to 50 minutes. And this is one of the major drawbacks causing people to step away from purchasing an electric vehicle. So when you drive a gas car, you spend no more than five minutes at the pump. And I don't think we can see this for electric vehicles for at least another 10 years, which is causing so much untapped potential in the company. Now we know they cannot speed up the charging at superchargers because the battery won't be able to sustain that. We know excessive use at superchargers just lowers the life of your ultimate battery whereas you were previously getting 260 280 miles per charge but since you continually use the supercharger it drops down to 240 because of that and these are the known problems that tesla has to handle but all in all is tesla a great investment to make now i believe this earnings is going to print because of the upcoming projections of cash flow and their massive production of vehicles 
but time will only tell so we're definitely going to give an update on the earnings once they are released in two days if you guys enjoyed this quick little update be sure to smash that like and subscribe i'll catch you guys on the next one see ya